Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur and Yelp. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life and in the restaurant business, we learn through lessons and stories. We host this show to teach you, the entrepreneurs, the food entrepreneurs, about the creator economy and how you can share your story using all these platforms that we have available to us. The restaurant business is hard business. Today's guest is a 2022 James Beard Award finalist. He is the food and wine best new chef of 2021. He has multiple concepts. He has a brand new sexy cookbook called Horn Barbecue. You can find him at Matt Horn X. You can find him at Horn Barbecue. You can find him at Horn Hospitality. You can Google his name and find out how much content he has online because this man is truly a restaurant influencer. I've been following his journey for a long time now, part of the West Coast Barbecue movement, and it's truly an honor to have uh, Matt here today. Matt, welcome to the show. Sean, it's, it's an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so you seem to be popping up in the news every single where, everywhere. It is so impressive and it is so well-deserved. Um, one of the things that we talk about on the show is we are building our media company the way we build our barbecue and that's low and slow. Yeah. So we're starting to get a lot of press for our restaurant. And I tell people, well, we're a 14 year success, overnight success. Things don't happen because of quickness. Things happen because you're exactly where you're supposed to be. So I'm going to start with a question, a weird question. Where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Wow. Maybe it's stadium. Oh, wow. You know what? My favorite stadium is definitely where the Yankees are playing at, for sure. You know, I'm a bit of a Yankees guy. But you know what? The very first baseball game that I ever went to was back in 1993. My grandfather took me to a Dodgers and Pirates game. I was a young boy at that time. He was still around. You know, he's, he's passed on. But he took me to that game, and I never forgot the experience it was. So I, I look back on that because Grandpa was involved with it. You know, Dodger Stadium is, is uh, okay. special. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'm going to take you back to Dodger Stadium. We're going to pack it with all the people that are playing the game within the game in hospitality, in restaurants, in barbecue, all over the globe. I'm going to bring everybody out. I'm going to put you on pitcher's mound. I'm going to give you a mic and I'm going to give you two minutes to tell the Matt Horn story. Uh, it's something that we encourage all of our listeners, people listening. You got to have a two minute drill. You got to tell people who you are and own your story. Uh, can you do can you do two minutes? I could do it. All right, let's go. Well, you know what? I started off very humbly in my grandmother's backyard. Um, the backyard was a place where I was able to hone my craft, hone my skills, but it was the only place that I can go and be one with the fire. Um, living in an apartment in Los Angeles during the time, I wasn't able to smoke meats there. I didn't have a cooker or anything like that. So that backyard became my school. That was my culinary, uh, that was my culinary school. I started there, you know, I decided to take my product out and sell it to the public. We did a farmer's market in 2016. From 2016 to 2017, I took that as an opportunity to learn how to interact with our guests, but also to continue to hone on the barbecue. Just like you said, Sean, what we do in life is low and slow. It's not an overnight, it's not an overnight process at all. And there's different ways of cooking meats. We know that, but that's where I started. We then decided to start doing pop-ups. Uh, the very first pop-up I did, maybe 15 people showed up. I cried like a baby. And I, I literally was just, uh, I was grateful that anybody would even want to show up for our food. And from that point forward, man, it took off to a point where, you know, we were serving upwards of 300 to about 500 guests. And we would walk the line, shake everybody's hand, thank them for coming. But that was just us being gracious and being grateful for, you know, for our guests coming to support what we were doing. And since then, you know, the awards that we've won, you know, Best New Restaurant and being recognized in Esquire Magazine and the Michelin recognition. And, you know, I, I look at it where, you know, I have a responsibility to continue pushing barbecue forward, but there's a great weight on my shoulder, but it's one that I'm willing to carry because, you know, barbecue is what I love and the community is beautiful and, this is where we are now. And I'm grateful to be sitting here with you. I'm so, a fan of 
breed and enjoy what you do, man. And I'm grateful to be here. It's an honor. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, for us, what what's so exciting for us is that anybody that's listening to this, if you have internet access, if you get this podcast, if you find it on YouTube, if you find the clip on Instagram, you find the clip on TikTok, no matter where you find the content, there are people out there like yourselves. You know, you and I didn't get to where we were, where we are, where we plan on going without help. You know, right. asking for help is so difficult to do as a man. It's one of the things I failed to do as a restaurant early owner early on. Who taught you how to ask for help and why, why has that helped propel your career? You know what? So the, the, the principles that were instilled in me really at a young age was that, uh, you know, my father would always say is that if you're not learning, then, you know, you're going in the, the wrong direction. So that was always in my mind where I had to constantly be like learning. So it's like, even now with everything that's been accomplished, I'm forever a student of barbecue, but I'm also a student of business, a student of life. So there was a lot of great guys that have come before me that are operating barbecue restaurants now. And I would ask them a lot of questions. And the questions that was always, you know, it always seemed like I was always asking the same thing is that why do you do what you do? What is it that inspires you to get up every day to go and attack it? Um, you know, what are some things that, you know, some wisdom that you can instill in me so I can run a better business and a better barbecue operation. And as men, you know, uh, in life, we have to humble ourselves and be willing to ask for help and understand that, yeah, we, we do feel like, hey, you know, we, we know a lot, but you can always learn something more. So every day I wake up, I try to find some way to be inspired, but also try to consume content and some sort of uh, source of knowledge that will help contribute to what we're doing and what we're building. So I got this incredible book, this beautiful labor of love, Horn Barbecue. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. We'll put a link in the show notes. But one of the most powerful questions you pose in the book is, what is life if the life you are living is unfulfilling? Why that question and bring us back to that moment? You know what? I think that uh, I found barbecue, but I feel, I, feel like, I feel like barbecue found me in my life during a time where, you know, I was waking up every day and I was literally doing the same thing. All right. So I'm doing the same thing every day I'm waking up. And the company I was working for, the job that I was doing, um, I was grateful to have it. You know, it helped pay the bills and that sort of thing. But I wasn't fulfilling a purpose. I didn't feel fulfilled with uh, what I was doing. And with anything, you know, if there's not purpose behind it, you know, why are we doing it? You know, time is life's most precious commodity. And we go through life and we don't know whether tomorrow, you know, what's what tomorrow is going to bring. And we often hear that tomorrow's not promised. So if, if, we're, if we're living on borrowed time, why not do something that you love? Why not do something that literally gives you life it's something that makes you feel fulfilled it's something that gives you purpose and those are the things that's why i pose that question in the book because barbecue is a labor of love you know we both know this that it's not easy you know day in and day out you have to commit yourself to you know to fulfilling this craft and to execute this craft uh, day in and day out i chase perfection in everything that i do and i'll never be perfect we're not perfect at all but will arrive in excellence. And so that's the thing that really drives me day in and day out. And so I found fulfillment in preparing food for, for strangers, for family, for friends. And, you know, it's a form of, uh, it's a way of how I express love. And I do that. I use barbecue as that vehicle. And now for a quick break from our show, we want to welcome the newest sponsor to restaurant influencers and that is pop menu you know how obsessed we are with digital hospitality on this show you know how obsessed we are with smartphone storytelling we were so excited to welcome pop menu because they have an incredible suite of tools to help you with your online ordering and your digital experience for the brand of your business i was visiting our ghost kitchen location in san diego i came across another business owner who was opening up his ghost kitchen location we talked about all the things we talk about on this show. He told me D'Amato's Pizza 
he was looking for a new website. He was looking to improve his website. And one of the best parts about it was he told me that Pop Menu had reached out to him and they were already helping him with his online ordering experience, not just for his ghost kitchen, but also for his brick and mortar business. D'Amato's Pizza, very cool that Pop Menu is boots on the ground in all these different markets to help your restaurant. Pop Menu also has a credible tool called Pop Menu Answering. Not answering your phone is one of the quickest ways for your restaurant to lose a potential customer. That's why your restaurant needs Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering is powered by artificial intelligence to answer the simple questions most people call in with, like, do you have outdoor seating? What are your hours? And with Pop Menu, you can customize your answers, choose the voice your guests hear, and even customize those greetings. Plus, Pop Menu's full collection of tools help optimize your website and menu, streamline the ordering experience, and assist in remarketing. Reclaim the power of your phone now with Pop Menu Answering. Please visit popmenu.com slash influencers, where my listeners can lock in $100 off your first month, plus an unchanging monthly rate. Please go to popmenu.com slash influencers. It helps the show. It helps our sponsor. And more importantly, it's going to help your restaurant. Now back to the show. Yeah, hospitality is the the gift of of giving to strangers, of, of loving, of giving of yourself. Right, absolutely. As a man, one of the difficult things that I don't think is talked about a lot is how important having a strong woman behind you is. Mm-hmm. Can you talk to me about Nina, about the the all in moments, the rooftop burnt barbecue that you're presenting to her, right? When you're trying to court her and win her over and you going all in on your dreams and, you know, the support that she had to, to let you chase this crazy dream, because, you know, I think it's so important for people to know when you're chasing your passion, those closest to you, there are very few that will support you. You know, my wife was one of those people that supported me, but so many of my friends that I love, they laughed at me. They told me that you're crazy. What are you doing? Can you bring me back to when you were courting your wife and, and how she supported you through all the ups and downs of, of, of this, this crazy barbecue life and journey that you've been on? You know, what? I, I always, I always tell the story of, you know, I just had a heart for wanting to feed and wanting to give and that sort of thing. And, you know, when we first met each other, I felt that, you know, Hey, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to cook her some ribs on this little, on this little Weber cooker, man. It was direct fire. I was torching them. It was just, and I tried to do the best I can to just like, okay, I'm just trying to make us some food. You know, I hope that she's impressed. I hope she enjoys it. And she gave me her honest opinion about it. And I think that that, that telling the truth and that transparency and communication is extremely important. Not just just how we, how we interact and communicate with each other, but I think it's, you know, the transparency is, is everything. That's something we built our brand on. But she's literally been there since the beginning, supporting me. I'm talking about barbecue nonstop. I didn't even have a cooker at the time. And I would have to just try to convince her to go out to Fresno. Like, hey, you know, we're going to go visit family. And that was my way of trying to get her out there so I could spend the weekend, (laughs) uh, you know, cooking barbecue when I teach her myself. And you know what, man? I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, Once I left for my job, I didn't have anything. All I had was this vision and this idea of creating a barbecue brand where there was no corners cut. Um, We delivered excellence and quality day in and day out. Because these are the principles I've always lived my life for. So I never cut corners, even on our branding or, you know, it could be like the smallest of things, things that people don't see. You know, I always tell my team all the time, you know, the most important part of a fence is what's behind the fence. That's what's in front of it. Yeah. It, from a from a character standpoint, you know. So we focus on the things that people don't see um, with our brand. I think that's why we've been able to build a brand that people can relate to, but that's genuine. But when I say that, she's never not once asked me to say, "Hey, Matt, go get a job. What are you doing?" You know, and I think this is. I think you should be doing something else. Just like you, my friend, I, I had a lot of people that looked at what I was doing and laughed. And I think that, I think that the humor they found in what I was doing was the fact that, you know, for me to go from retail management to all of a sudden now, you know, I'm a cook and I'm cooking barbecue. At farmer's markets. Right. You know, they, they looked at that like, 
I thought she wanted to get into real estate or I thought you were doing management or I thought you were promoting or doing some other thing. I'm like, no, this is what I'm doing is because, you know, I found love in being in, in barbecue, but then cooking for others. She's been there the whole way, man. And there'd be times where, you know, we would have our pop-ups and she's, she's batching out, you know, we, so we would do a couple, a couple different sides or whatnot. She'd make about five hotel pans of each side. And then she would turn around and then do the banana pudding. I would be off by the smoker, you know, staring into the fire. I'm in a zone and I'm zoning out, enjoying that. And just, you know, the thing that consumes us, the thing that we love so much about barbecue. And not, not once does she not support me. And I'm going to be completely honest with you here. Um, I've had a lot of family not support me. And even to this day, I, I wouldn't say that they're not supportive, but I would say that, um, uh, It's been, I think it's probably been hard for them to accept where we've taken the brand. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, right? Yeah. And with that being said, the choices that we make in life lead us to where we are today. I decided to cut out the party and cut out the drink and hanging out with my buddies. Um, I've sacrificed having to go travel and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, I haven't been on a vacation. I haven't been on a vacation because my head has been down and I literally have just been grinding. And I tell my buddies, and I've said it before, and people have heard it, and I literally was just like, if you want to take the island, you got to burn the boats. And I live by that. You know, I have a buddy, a, a good buddy of mine named Edward, every morning we wake up, and he's like, burn the boats, man. <laughs> my kind of guy. I yeah, love that, it. That's, that's our thing, man, where it's like every day we wake up, you know, what brick are we going to lay in the foundation of our dreams and where we're going? And everybody may not support you on this journey. And I think that that's when, you know, you got to kind of dig down deep within yourself where when you're going down this tunnel in life or entrepreneurship or business or anything, whatever you're wanting to pursue, what happens when you don't, you no longer see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I heard a quote somewhere. It was, it was actually out of a, it was actually out of a movie. It was a Bond movie, actually. And the villain literally asked his son, he said, hey, what do you do when you went down a hole and you've gone so far and you don't know which way to go? And his son responded back to him. He's like, you keep going. Yep. Even when you don't see that light at the end of the tunnel, you have to keep walking by faith. You have to keep putting that next foot, you know, ahead of the next. Uh, I just saw a quote on Twitter, actually, was true character is, is built in darkness. Absolutely. And when you think about your journey, when you think about your time at the fire, when you take, think about those overnight cooks, when you think about the time where you almost walked away, where you literally almost quit barbecue, can you, can you share that story? Because I, like I said, people see the success and it's easy to go down an Instagram rabbit hole and go, man, he's got ult mul multiple concepts. He's got a cookbook. He's got all these accolades, man, he's just crushing it but bring us back to, to when you almost walked away to that darkness. You know what, at that point, I felt that, you know, we had already finished the farmer's market. So that, that was tough uh, every weekend going out there and not making any money, all right? And I kind of felt, uh, I felt a little embarrassed. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. And the reason being is that, you know what, I, I have my wife out here, you know, it's middle of the summer, uh, we're in a black tent, you know, we got black shirts on and black aprons and we're, we're burning up in here. And then I'm around the fire, man. And, you know, it's in, in the valley, you know how it gets, man. It gets, it gets hot out of the valley. And, you know, coming from granny's backyard, doing the farmer's market. And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go out and just set up at this bar and it's on us off of a busy street. There's cars going back and forth. We're set up, we're extremely visible. And I stayed up all night preparing the food and I was cooking like I have any other time, right? But it was something about that day where I realized that, hey, you know what? We've been out here for a few hours. We've sold nothing. How long am I gonna continue to keep telling my wife and everybody around me, like, hey, everything is going to be good. You guys, we got to persevere. Let's stick with it. Everything's going to be great. 
And I felt in that moment that, hey, you know what, maybe I need to look in the mirror. Maybe I need to rethink, um, you know, Matt Horn grow a barbecue. I'm going to have to rethink that. And, you know, seeing my wife sweating and she's pregnant during the time, I, I felt bad. So I told her to just go home. Um, her brother was out there with me. I mean, this guy was sweating and he, he's sitting down and he's like, hey, how much longer are we going to be out here? And I told him, I said, hey, I don't care if it takes all night. I'm going to sell this food. Yep. Now, that could have been ego or pride of just kind of like, hey, man, nobody's coming. Pack up your stuff and walk away. But I think it dawned on me in that moment that, hey, you know what? Maybe I, maybe there are better things I could be doing in life. And, you know, after being out there for a little over five hours, I did pack up all the food that I stayed at the cook. No one came by. I, to this day, uh, I often think about that. Why didn't anybody come by? It's not the fact that the food we were serving wasn't good or that they didn't see us or whatever the case may be. We get dealt these tests in life. Yep. My dad used to always tell me earlier on, you know, we were playing sports. He would always ask me, like, hey, Matt, how bad do you want it? He would always ask that, how bad do you want it? Everybody kind of looks at There's a lot of good amount of people that looks at barbecue where it's just kind of like this thing that's just – very low entry, you know, barrier for entry. You can just go get a pit and a shovel. You know, people are calling themselves pit masters. They think that things happen overnight and they don't. And I went through that mental battle and I was dealing with it both physically and I was dealing with it emotionally. And that's where I decided that, hey, you know what? I think I'm done with barbecue. And that happened after I packed up all that food and I went and I, you know, I gave it to the less fortunate. Um, I found a place where there was, you know, there was tents and that sort of thing. And I set up my table and it made me happy to be able to serve them. I gave it all away. Yeah. You know, I've been losing money all this time. And I'm just like, you know what? If I'm going to give this food away, I don't look at it as a waste. Um, I was able to feed somebody today. If not just, it doesn't have to be hundreds of people like what we do now, but I can just feed one purpose, one person. And today wasn't a complete failure, but after I gave away all that food and served it all, I went home that day and I was like, you know what, I think, uh, I think I'm think i done with barbecue. And uh, I laid in bed all night thinking about it and I had made that decision. And literally the next day I woke up, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do today? And I went in the backyard and I lit the fire again. Man. I lit that fire Persistent. again. Relentless. It, it just, you know, and that's what it is, bro. It's literally like being relentless, but then yep. also finishing what you start and being committed, yep. being truly committed to it. So even in the midst of me telling myself, we're done, I don't want to do barbecue anymore, there was something still inside of me that was telling me, keep going. And it was like a little voice. and It was a thought of mine. I don't, I don't know what it was, but something inside of me it was just like, keep going. And, you know, in, in life, sometimes you do have to walk away from certain situations if things aren't working out. It doesn't make you a failure. What it is is a lesson. Maybe, you know, you know, it's nothing like, you know, it's like a Jay-Z verse where it was like, there's nothing wrong with your aim. You just got to change the target. Yeah. You know, so what I started doing is, it's like, okay, let me rethink this thing and, you know, let me go about it a different way. You know, and so, and, and that's what I did. And I made a decision. I pivoted and I made, you know, I went another direction. Well, barbecue is lucky. The West Coast is lucky that you made the decision that you made. So Stover Harger, uh, the third, he's the producer of the podcast. He's my right-hand guy for Cali Barbecue Media. He he spent an hour and a half with you um, in Texas back on one of your many trips to Texas to, to learn the craft. Um, what he shared with me uh, about your, your guys' time together was the impact of having a son. And, you know, he has a son. I have a son. Uh, people that are listening to this, whether you're a man, woman, if you if you have children, you know that children change everything. And I think in hospitality, it's so important for us to think about the next generation and what are we raising our children in? Um, do we really want to be building the kind of business where you're burning the candle on both ends, 365 days out of the year, you know, the way that the old hospitality model is? For me, I want something different. And from what Stover told me about you and the things that I've read about you, the things that I've followed about you, you're not shy about telling everyone you're a family man. 
you're not shy about showing your kids, you're not shy about teaching them. Why is that so important for you? And what are you trying to teach them? I think that, you know, one of the, the greatest things that I can contribute in life and one of the greatest things that it's been an honor to be as a father. Um, my father was there for me. My father has fought for me. But now that I have, you know, a son and a daughter, it's extremely important for me to, to lay down the foundation to create, to create a legacy for them. But then more than just being a parent and teaching them is teaching them by example and to be a positive example to them. You know, when I met Stover in Austin and, you know, we, we talked about fatherhood, he had touched me with, you know, his personality and, you know, I have nothing but love for him and nothing but respect for him. He's a great guy. And we talked about, you know, about fatherhood, the importance of being there for our children. And I think that legacy is something that we pass down in terms of what is it that our children are going to say about us? I always think about that, you know, what kind of man, what kind of father am I being? And one thing that's really important to me when I look at them in their eyes, you know, and, I, and still to this day, you know, my daughter is five and my son, Maddie, little Matt Jr. is six. When I look at them, they're so innocent and they're learning and pouring into them, but then we're laying the foundation for them and we have to set a positive example. So I want my children to see that, you know, their father has a very strong work ethic. But one thing about it is no matter what I try to build in this life with business or with their barbecue or this really big hospitality group and everything that I want to accomplish my own personal dreams, I'm extremely intentional about the time that I spend with them. Just as much as the time that I put in with barbecue. I've heard people say, you gotta find a work-life balance. I've heard people say that there is no such thing as a work-life balance. I mean, I know who I am in this life and what it is that I wanna create. But one thing I am very intentional about is the time that I invest with my children. Because it's yeah. very important for us to pour into our children and you know, pour that love into them. The love that was poured into to me by my parents, like earlier on, I used to see, you know, my parents bring people into our homes, whether it was my mother bringing in, you know, our cousins and stuff like that, where they didn't have a home to stay in, or my mother and father bringing in people that they met at the church that needed a place to stay. I saw that and I didn't understand it as a kid because we're wondering like, okay, who are we sharing the dinner table with? And, you know, who are these people that are in our home? that they had a heart after helping people, you know what I mean? So that translated with me, and that's something I'm gonna pass down you know, to my children as well. Just have a heart and a love for all people. Absolutely. Uh, so we're very fortunate that Toast, our primary technology partner, invested in this show. They're you know, our title sponsor. They care about making us a digital restaurant, helping restaurants all over the world. What kind of technology have you guys implemented at Horn Hospitality, either at, at any of your concepts? And I heard your, your son's opening up a concept, six-year-old, right? Maddie's <laughs> Burgers is coming up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so we, so we have Maddie's Burgers. You know, because I was really thinking like a, I, I could have easily called it like Horn Burger or something else or whatever, but I was like, you know what? we're going to call it Maddie's Burgers. I love it. We're going to call it Maddie's Burgers. And, and that's a really cool concept for us to open. Because like at the end of the day, I can open it. Me as a chef and entrepreneur and restaurateur, I want to be able to create concepts and be able to create opportunities for the people that are around us. Yeah. Our team. We have people that come in. I have a guy that came in as a dishwasher. He's worked his way up to one of the lead cooks. And, you know, he's going to be helping around another concept that, that's that awesome. we're working on. So I think that that's like, that's really cool. And I feel like that's, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But technology with everything that we do is what, is what pushes business forward, you know? And, you know, we work with Toast, you know, Toast is- Oh, you do? Yeah, Toast. Look at that. Boom. Right yeah, look at so. that. Toast, you hear it? See that? That's unsolicited. Yeah. Boom. Look yeah. at that. So, you, know, we have toast. <laughs> you heard it here. Horn barbecue is on the Toast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, we enjoy using Toast and uh, Toast has been able to, provide us with, you know, the equipment and the technology we need to be able to continue to push our business. So we're happy to work with them. But it's I mean, I think that's it. I'm so happy to hear that. And I think it's a conversation that is hard to have when you're talking about barbecue, because right. we talk about slow food, but right. how do you get slow food fast? And in order to get that fast part, 
is almost insulting to the craft of barbecue. But we have the technology. What I talk about is we have a point of sale in our pocket. So how do we give the guest, you know, an experience where they're ordering online? You know, you would much rather receive money ahead of time before, as opposed to yeah, right. like the farmer's right. markets where you're just hoping and praying that someone comes out. <laughs> yeah, right. If someone's like, hey, Matt, I want to give you five grand for a bunch of brisket. Like we need to figure out a way to get that money. We need to do that. And I think that that's where uh, you look at it. I mean, even with a lot of the things that you're doing with your brand and your company, we need to think of ways to be innovative. I was reading an article about you, man. And I was really blown away with like a lot of the things that you're doing to pivot and to push barbecue and to change barbecue culture. Because you think about it, um, the old ways of doing things, I mean, we're not growing um, as an industry, as a brand, you know, then, you know, we run the risk of failure and we have to constantly be innovative. Constantly yeah. be innovative. I say this all the time that we're not, we're not reinventing the wheel. What we're doing is refining it. And pretty much how we refine that is whether it be with Cali barbecue, whether it be with Horn barbecue, we're taking different approaches of where it's like, okay, where can we take barbecue that'll be beneficial for us? But then also people that are coming up from barbecue and coming up in the restaurant right. industry, they can take these same principles and techniques and implement it. Yeah, I love that. So my, my grandfather taught me to stay curious, to get involved and to ask for help. Um, we have an incredible community of people that listen to this show that interact with us on social. You've got incredible community that interacts with you. Um, every Wednesday and Friday, we do a clubhouse room on the clubhouse app at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hopefully when your episode drops, you can join us to okay. interact with the with the people that come on. But uh, one of them, I want to give them a shout out, and that's Charlie Eblin of at single tree barbecue uh, murphy's borough tennessee he has launched his concept he has got a barbecue food truck nice. he has uh taken all the the tools and tips and things that we talk about with smartphone storytelling he's he's doing instagram live videos he's doing tiktok content he's putting it. himself out there what advice would matt horn give to someone like charlie to single tree barbecue to somebody that's chasing their dreams back to, to where, when you were, when you were there chasing your dreams, what, what advice would you give him? First and foremost, Charlie, congrats, man. I don't know if you're watching this or if you get to watch it, congrats on launching your concept. Um, it, it takes a lot to go out and step out on faith and be like, Hey, you know what? I want to put my name or product out there. So much respect to you and your family, man. But uh, you know what? Charlie is doing it right. And the reason why I say that is, is that I've seen earlier on when I first got started, one thing that was extremely important for me was to utilize social. Here, let me tell you this. I was always a Blackberry user. All right. <laughs> nice. I like, like it. Blackberry user. That was your jam. <laughs> that was my thing. Man. That was my thing. And uh, I, year after year, you get the new, the new Blackberries that come out, different models. And you're like, hey, I got the, the BBMs and everything like that. Cool. We, we, we got the Blackberry Messenger and this and that. But I ended up meeting somebody and one thing about it is I'm very obsessed with the visual component of life and just anything that we do. I yeah. love photography um, and I loved it and I feel like it tells a story, paintings and that sort of thing. Um, but one thing that was extremely important for me was I need to be able to find a way to be able to post pictures and that sort of thing. And MySpace was the only way for me to be able to go and my, my wall would just be covered with imagery, really beautiful and compelling imagery. And I had a friend who had an iPhone and I was just like, what is that app that you're on? And he's like, it's Instagram. I'm like, well, what is that? He's like, well, it's just photos. You post a photo, there's a caption and there's, a, there's different filters. I was so obsessed that I went and got an iPhone. I had to be at work the next day I stayed up all night on this iPhone on this Instagram and I was just like completely blown away by it but one thing about it is earlier on with building the horn brand it was extremely important for me to be transparent to our guests and to be able to document everything so I wanted to document everything I wanted to be transparent to the guests and what it was was I wanted them to see everything that I was doing to prepare the food that we were doing so it was just like, that was our way of communicating our love and our commitment to our guests. So I started documenting everything and, you know, utilizing the Instagram live and utilizing the stories 
and uh, you know, really great branding and cool imagery. So Charlie's definitely doing it right. I would literally encourage any and everyone take advantage of these social media apps that's out there. That's a, that's a platform that you can use to be able to build on your brand, to be able to build value and equity within what you're doing. And that's something that I've always relied on. That's something I've used. And, um, you know, our pop-ups took off the way that they did was the fact that I was able to communicate and tell a story of who Horn Barbecue was. Yep. So during the cooks, you know, I'm up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and I'm posting a story, and people would literally be like, do you ever sleep? Why are you up? And that sort of thing. And what that did was... That, that, that was adds to the storytelling. That adds to the legend. That lets people know what the craft is. Right, absolutely. And then opens the door for conversation. Yep. People are like, well, why are you up at 3 a.m.? Well, here, let me show you. Yep. This is what I'm doing. Well, I didn't realize that. You know, I had a pop-up one time, and I had a guy literally right when we sold out. He's like, you don't have any more briskets? And I'm like, you know what, buddy? We're all sold out. Um, you know, just next time, you may want to come just a little bit earlier. We're cooking a capacity on our cookers. And he's like, well, can't you just cook another one? I can for tomorrow. And I said, right. I said, well, I'd have to get started now for tomorrow. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. There's a lot of people that don't understand because a lot of us, you know, just grew up just on grilling. Yep. And people do it in their backyard every weekend and that sort of thing. But when you're committed to the craft the way we are, you're completely obsessed with what you're doing. I needed to communicate that. And I did the same thing when we opened up. Excuse me. I did the same thing. We opened up the brick and mortar where... Anybody that's ever traveled to Horn Barbecue, I took the wall down and we have a glass wall. So you can see inside of the pit room and see the work that the guys are doing and know that, hey, you know what? This is not a microwave process. You know, we have no freezers and there's nothing wrong if you do have freezers, but everything we're doing, we're making fresh. You know, it's literally going straight to the smoker and then from the smoker straight to the butcher's line. So in your wife, in your wildest dreams, you could have never imagined the success and the accolades that you have right now. Now, when you're sitting here and we're doing this for an entrepreneur, we're having this conversation, what's next? What's that big audacious goal that you don't think you could ever achieve, but you're going to go after? Have you shared it? Have you shared it with anyone besides your wife? And will you share it with the world? Will you put it out there? What's, uh, what's Madhorn building yeah. next beyond yeah. the, beyond the more concepts? You know what? I like to, so I always say that when you dream of something or you have a vision for what you want to create, if it doesn't make you nervous or scare you, it's not big enough. Yep. If people aren't laughing at you, it's not big enough. Exactly, man. So my thing is I want to create more live fire experiences. And I think I want to connect people back to the way that I feel like barbecue should be consumed. Now, a restaurant is great. There's nothing wrong with having a brick and mortar and running it, doing it that way. But I feel like there's other ways for us to present barbecue to the world through different experiences. And one of the things that I've just really, really enjoyed is literally going out on a farm, going up into the mountains, going into some secluded area, setting up a table, having that fire and smoke there, and to be able to bring people together to experience that. So we're working on our form of, you know, these outdoor live fire experiences. Amazing. Also, our plan is, you know, with the Horn Barbecue is to open up in different markets and be able to, you know, share our love that way. But we're, we're building in terms of, you know, product offering. And one thing that we are working on, um, and we've been working on for a while now, the, the pandemic pushed it back, but we're working on a massive uh, barbecue festival. There we go. Massive festival, yeah. So there we go. And that's the thing where I'm like, I, and I did this with barbecue earlier. on the West Coast. This is something we're gonna do on the West Coast. There we go. Now we're talking. Because uh, you know, here's the thing: when people, when, when you hear like, okay, I am here on the West Coast, and they're like a West Coast barbecue. Whether it's the work that you're doing, we're here. You know, we're here. We are here on the West Coast, but. The work that we're doing is impact of barbecue across the country. Yep. There you know, is no I mean, globally, we, we have friends all over the earth that because of the internet, I mean, we're connected, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, whether it's podcast, YouTube, you name it, we're all connected. I've been invited to so many different countries, man, just to come out and they just like, we just come out here and cook, do a pop-up, that sort of thing. 
it was a very beautiful thing, but barbecues in our heart, barbecues love. Yep. And, you know, I, I don't limit it to one specific region. Uh, there's people all over the world, man, that don't get recognition. That's making some of the best barbecue that you can eat on this earth. And that's something that I feel like with Horn Barbecue, uh, I never go around and say, hey, man, I'm the best or this and that. You'll never hear that anywhere. We don't say that at our restaurant. Our guys don't say that. We don't cut corners. We make barbecue the best that we can make it. And all I'm doing is, is just literally contributing to this beautiful art and tradition of barbecue. So that's the thing that I focus on. But then also I came into barbecue, not coming in from culinary school. I taught myself in a backyard. So with that being said, branding was extremely, extremely important to me, but I was an entrepreneur before I came into barbecue. So that's the thing where when you see like, okay, you're doing different things with different concepts. Well, we're creating a hospitality group that's yep. building a diverse portfolio that will have a variety of different bit divisions of what we're offering within the horn hospital, within the horn brand. Barbecue and creating cooking by fire is who I am. That's the foundation of what we do. But then also we want to be able to create opportunities for others and then also work with other chefs and pit masters to bring under the horn barbecue umbrella. That's something I haven't shared. That's something I'm sharing with you, but we are going to be looking to work with uh, different brands to work with within Horn Hospitality Group. That's awesome. I'm going to be able to share my resources and things that I've learned along the way. And then I want to help build up other brands yep. so people can be able to contribute and provide for their communities, but also for their families as well. That's super cool, man. So if you guys want to interact with Matt, you can find him at Matt Horn X, at Horn Barbecue, at Horn Hospitality, at Cowbird. How many other, hand, any other handles I'm missing? <laughs> you know what? We have <laughs> Dolly as well. Dolly is a really cool concept that, uh, that we're going to have some of our guys uh, working on. But, uh, like and Dolly is the taco? They do like the smoked meat tacos. Oh, sweet. I love it. Oxtails, brisket pork belly, just different, just cool stuff, man. And like I said, I don't, I'll never go out and do anything that I don't enjoy. And I feel like in life, uh, if I'm doing something that's not making me happy, then I feel like I'm wasting time. And I feel like yeah. that's fair for people that are coming to support the brand or want to come and try the food. So that's something that we're doing, man. We're working on some really cool brands. And then, uh, you know, like I said, we want to build a strong hospitality group. And we're that's awesome. We're working on day in and day out. So if you guys want to interact with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef on social. That's LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Um, please join us on Clubhouse every Wednesday, every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hopefully we get Matt to join us. Please buy this incredible labor of love, uh, Horn Barbecue. I can't believe how great the storytelling is, how great the photos are. I mean, the amount of time and effort that you put into this, plus doing everything that you're doing, um, it's no wonder you don't sleep. It is no wonder you don't sleep. But thank you guys for listening. We're grateful. Um, any, the best way you can support the podcast is to share it with a friend, share it with someone that needs to hear it in the hospitality space. And uh, if you know anybody out there that uh, their story is worth telling, no matter where they are in the globe, if they're inspiring their communities, we want to share share what they're doing. And as as Matt says, burn the boats. Anything else? Any, anything else, brother? You know what? I want to thank you, first and foremost. And I want to tell you, I'm a really great admirer of the work that you're doing. Um, you're doing some really great work, and it's definitely inspiring a lot of people. I'm inspired by what you're doing, and uh, you have a dope brand. And Appreciate that, brother. Up. Just keep being who you are, man, because uh, you have a you have a very wonderful spirit, and I'm, I'm grateful that I've sat here and for you to have given me the opportunity to have a conversation with you. Yeah, we're just getting started, man. Whatever you need from from us in Southern California, we all of our resources we're we're at your disposal. Thank Whatever you, you need, brother. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. If you are looking to improve your digital hospitality and you would like to learn more about what Toast has done for many of the guests on this show, like Sam the Cooking Guy, Stacey Poonkinney, Matt Horn, they all have trusted Toast to be their primary technology partner, just like we did at Cali Barbecue. When we struggled with online ordering during the pandemic, we knew that we needed to switch from Aloha to Toast. Toast helped us with online ordering. They helped us with loyalty. They helped us with gift cards. 
Guests can order food when they want on their terms and they can pay from the table. If you want to learn more, DM me at Sean P. Walchef on any social platform and I will get you in touch with the right people at Toast to help scale your restaurant brand.